Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. I'm going to show you this pretty stamp set that's in the annual Stampin' Up! 2024-25 catalog. I love this from the moment I saw it. I loved the font. I loved the boldness of the images on here. And I love, of course, that it is all about grateful blessings, of which I am very grateful for so many things in my life. For you guys watching this video, for my business, for my family, for all the new babies that are continuing to come. And I just want to thank Jesus for all of that. I want to show you a card that we made in our Busy Bee bag in May. This may be a surprise to a few of my Busy Bees, but this was an Aerofold card. It was one of the cards that um, we made, or my girls will be making in their Busy Bee bags. And it's a fun fold that is so simple to make, but has such a wow factor to it. So now on this one, I used the Spotlight on Nature. Each Busy Bee bag has a bundle or a stamp and a die or a punch that I feature. And this one had the Spotlight on, on Nature bundle that had the pretty dies and the sentiments and the images. And I did use the new in color shy shamrock on this one. So I am going to be using the same dies and some of the colors in the new lineup for the 2024 to 26 in colors, but I'm gonna do an arrow card in a different style. So this one is a landscape and I'm gonna do a portrait. So here we go. We're gonna be using that Grateful Blessings and our Spotlight on Nature dies. I wanted to show you how pretty our this new designer series paper is. Those who got paper shares from me have um, probably been getting them in the mail this week. So this one um, has a beautiful leaf pattern that on the back has stripes. And then this beautiful brocade like design with polka dots on the other side. So you have four different designs, fronts and backs, but you've got all the colors, Summer Splash, Petunia Pop, and the Peach Pie, and Pretty in Pink, and Summer, I mean, oh, I did the same one. Um, this No, this is actually different. Those colors are very similar, see, until I put them over there. This one is the Shy Shamrock on that card. Okay, so you would get those in your also, if you sign up, um, whether you're going to be a business demonstrator or a demonstrator as a hobby, you can sign up and they are giving away in the starter kit as a free gift, the in colors. So you're getting ink pads, markers, DSP and cardstock. So if you have any questions about that, please don't hesitate to contact me at 724-323-2296. The starter kit, $99 free shipping. You get to pick 125 plus you get the new ink colors in the ink pads, markers, DSP, and cardstock. So here we go. We are going to take a look at this fun card. Now, as you can see, this is an arrow fold and it has the portrait position. And I used those dies and the beautiful sentiments there. So I'm going to show you how easy it is. I mean, seriously, how easy it is to make one of these cards. Don't you just love that big font? Thank you for your prayers. You're such a blessing. So we're going to do a card, but we're going to, this one I went um, all monochromatic there. One color in all of the different things using the in color resin dots and then the paper and the DSP and the ink. Now this one I decided to use the Pretty in Pink and the Summer Splash, and I changed it up a little bit, putting You're Such a Blessing on the outside of the card, and Thank You for Your Prayers on the inside of the card. And I simply just put this centered in the top of my card, knowing I'm going to be putting the DSP on the inside. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is just do a little math here. Whenever we go to cut a card, you've got eight and a half by 11. So half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So I cut this at four and a quarter, and then half of 11 is five and a half, correct? Okay, so we're going to do that. We're gonna score on our trimmer. We're gonna put our dark blade at the top since it's the cutter. I've 
done that before when I've wanted to score. So we're gonna score at five and a half. Okay, so let's remember five and a half, okay? And then, as I said, it's four and a quarter this way. So now you just need to know what half of four and a quarter is, which is two and one eighth, and what half of five and a half is, two and three quarters. So if you can remember those, you're gonna be good. So I'm gonna just write those down. Oh, with a white pencil? I don't think so. Okay, things are flying around. So two and one eighth is half of four and a quarter and two and three quarters is half of five and a half. So remembering those numbers is gonna be super easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and make a tick mark with a pencil at two and a half on, okay, now this is the way I'm, I'm gonna fold it. I always fold on the mountain, the bump. I fold it this way. So this is gonna be the front of my card when it gets folded this way, think of it this way. So this is the front. So I am going to make a tick mark at two and an eighth. Okay, so two and an eighth, two and an eighth. I'm gonna make a little pencil mark. I'm using my trimmer. It makes it super easy because I can make the next mark and not have to move my paper there. Okay, so two and an eighth is my little tick mark there. Then I'm gonna turn my paper and on this section, on the same section that I've put the tick mark, I'm going to make a halfway mark between five and a quarter. And that is going to be two, five and a half, I, excuse me, three, uh, two and three quarters. So I go to two and three quarters and I'm gonna make a tick mark at the top of my trimmer. And when I use my trimmer, it makes it super easy because I don't have to measure twice. I can do one measurement this way and I can make two tick marks here, only measuring once instead of using my roller up on each side. So now we have three tick marks, right? We have a tick mark at the middle of the bottom of the front of the card at two and an eighth, and then we have one at two and three quarters, two and three quarters from, well, it's halfway, but you can say from the bottom. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna score from these corners where we will fold our card at that score line. We're gonna score down to the middle two and an eighth. So you put your two and an eighth and two and three quarters. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. I said we would do this one first. So we're gonna do two and three quarters here, get that in there and two and an eighth. Let's make sure I'm seeing it right here, no glare there. Okay, so I'm gonna take my scoring blade and I'm making that. And then we may as well do, while we're there, is do the two and three quarters. Two and three quarters, two and an eighth. Okay. I just went ahead and did them on both sides, but norm, you know, you could have went down here and down here and then did the other ones, but I figured while I was there. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna go at two and an eighth on the bottom, go up to the score line, score line, and two and an eighth to make sure it's in the groove there. Score, and then we're gonna score at two and three quarters and two and an eighth. Two and an eighth, two and three quarters, and score once again. Now let me give you more bang, and then I'm gonna just get rid of my little tick marks here that were ever so light. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a little hint. When you do a portrait card, you just use those half measurements again, and you make the point at the bottom of here two and three quarters, but you go up two and an eighth on these sides, and you do the same thing, score, 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 score. So as long as you know your math, what half of those are, and since we are <laughs> card makers, I think that we actually have gotten good at that. So now you can see all the score lines we have, okay? Then we're just gonna fold on those. We're just gonna fold them, and if you would like to, you could get a nice burnish on there. 
with your bone folder. Okay. This one looks like I was a tiny, tiny bit off, so I'm hoping I don't have a mess up down here. It's just a tiny bit off, which is hard to do whenever you're making a video because you're at a certain angle, but it looks like it's looking good. Sometimes it can be a little tricky down in this point to get the point there, but actually it looks like I'm a little tight. Oh, well, thank you, Stampin' Jesus. It was a little bit off on each side, so that's why it folded perfectly. And I think it was the angle that I was looking with the camera. So look how easy that was to make that fold. So now is the inside. Now the inside, as I said, I went ahead and stamped right in the middle. And this is just four by five and a quarter. I just want an eighth in on each side. And what we're gonna do there is we're gonna be putting um, some DSP on the inside, the way it goes like this, but I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do. So we are going to take a look at our paper here. I'm gonna go ahead, what should I do? Should I make the flowers? I think I'll do it the opposite way. You really just wanna pay attention to what you want to see here. I wanted the flowers to be seen there, so I looked at it and said, oh, okay, if it went this way. But if I wanted like the stripes on this side, the opposite, if I want them this way, I'm going to cut my paper so that they're this way, like the stripes were horizontal. But if I wanted them vertical, I would cut my paper this way. So this is a very forgiving paper because whichever way you do it, you actually can flip them around too because it's kind of a pattern that's non-directional. I mean, it's directional, but it could go any direction. So um, what we're gonna do is cut this down to that same size as our inside panel, which is four. But as I said, if you were using a paper that was directional, you want to look and make sure that your images are going the right way on the paper, the pattern. And we're gonna go to five and a quarter. Okay, and we'll cut that down. And then you save these because you know you're gonna use those little pieces for something else. Okay, so now we have this, and I think I decided I wanna put maybe the floral pattern on the triangle. So what I'm gonna do now is I do need to know a measurement, but I need to know a simple measurement. I don't even need a calculator. It's four inches cut in half would be two. So we are just gonna go right to the two mark on our grid, I mean, at the top of our, now this I got, it's called Wind Tape, W-I-N-T-A-P-E. I got it on Amazon and it is reading from right to left. And it's just a ruler that's adhesive and it runs from right to left. And so I make a tick mark. Oh wait, I'm gonna do it down here at two. But once again, it wouldn't have mattered because I would have just turned my paper. But I'm making it two at two inches there because I want my triangle to go this way. And then I simply just cut it with the point at the upper right. And sometimes I go in so I don't get, so I don't mess up the tip of my paper. And then I just go to the other one. There we go. And that one's in there. And all I did was go from the halfway mark and you would do the same thing if you were making your landscape card. Okay, so now we have these pieces. And like I said, you can play around with these. You could make the stripes going this way as opposed to this way. And this just happens to be with this paper. You could do this. You could actually leave your paper just like this if you like. But this way, if you turn these this way, you get a fun pattern that way. And that's actually what I wanna do. I'm just gonna make sure I'm all, there we go. Get all that edge where I cut and there we go. So I am going to do that inside piece first. And you simply adhere those two corners. I love, these actually were almost the same colors as my sorority in college, Delta Zeta, um, pink and green. Actually, they were literally these colors practically. Uh, so any Delta Zetas out there? Yes, you, as you can imagine, my, my role was the 
pledge a scholastic academic person. So I made sure that all of the pledges studied. So I figured that way I would make sure I got all my studying done. Because if I had to sit for three hours, three times a week and babysit people studying, well then, now I got this a little bit, um, then that was my way of making sure that I got my studying done. So we're just making sure that that's flush with the side of the paper. I look on the back, there we go. There's one side. Okay. And then we're just gonna get that flush with the side. And there we go, they meet in the middle. You've got a perfect little triangle there. You've got your right triangles and your, I guess that's an isosceles, isn't it? Because we've got two of the same side, the same length. Okay, so we're gonna put that on the middle of our card and just look how pretty that those colors look together. I was gonna do a petunia pop and pretty in pink, and then I was like, no, I'm going to do something with some different, but all the colors look really pretty together. They really complement each other, which happens a lot with the in colors. Sometimes, uh, some years they'll be a little bit. And then this one is going to go on the outside. But just as I was playing around with that, I realized we need to glue these down. Now we're going to have the top part of these insides because these get glued down and then these get glued down. So the only thing you have to do is make sure that you are gluing down the right place. Actually, I think I may go ahead and just use my stamp and seal. So just remember that place you only have till here. So if you want, you can put your adhesive. Oh wait, I did that wrong. I was trying to, let me get my adhesive remover here because that part, you have to really be careful where you're doing it. It only can go in the part that I showed you, and then I went and put it on the part that wasn't that. Okay, get that off there. Adhesive remover, awesome. Those little gummy eraser things. Okay, so let's just use glue. And my glue is getting down to, the, okay, so remember, it's only can be here. How many of you have glue on your table that you just can't throw it away because there's just one more drop? That's me. So you only put your glue on the part that's going down here, okay? And over on this side. So just keeping an eye on that part of it because if you put it on the flap that you're pressing down, you run the risk of getting glue on the part that's gonna sit down on your card. So there, okay, it's crazy nail color that's on here, oh my gosh. Okay, so there we go. And we also have to put it on here, but it only can be to this point, okay? So just think of it this way. And you can easily draw with your with your pencil, you could draw a mark so that you don't end up, so you know this piece is gonna go. Here, just pay attention when you're folding them where the glue would go. And it'll take a second for this glue to adhere. So we'll just do that. Okay, so there is that front arrow fold. Now this piece, now when I've made arrow folds in the past, sometimes they just turn out perfect and I have that, and this is one of those times. See how it just, you have a nice border around there, but sometimes it's off a little. If it is, just go the whole way to the top 
and don't have a border. You know, you can just do it that way, or you can put that little bit of a border at the top so it matches on the arrow fold, but it should fit in there. But if you're having a problem with that, you could trim off the top of this a little bit. Oh, look at what I was doing. I was putting glue on the wrong side because I want the flowers there. I know glue, you can make it. Get every last drip out of there. I think this one's gonna have to go in the garbage. I think it's done. I think it's done its job. So I'm gonna turn my paper this way so I can get this. So I'm gonna put, I want that border on the sides and at the top. But I want, I especially want the border at the top to be straight. So sometimes that's a little tricky. That's why sometimes I just leave the, uh, here, let me pull this here. That's why sometimes I leave the, I don't even put the border at the top. There, that looks nice and straight. And then you have to turn it a little sometimes just because we're not machines cutting, we're just people. And I just have a little, little tiny paper there. Okay, so isn't that pretty how the designer paper, and you can just, like I said, mix and match different ones, and I just use this beautiful, grateful blessings. I'm grateful for you. Thank you for your prayers. You're such a blessing. You are loved, and then the cute little flowers. I love that. So I just went ahead and made the you're such a blessing here, and once again, I just paid attention to where my oval was going to hit and I wanted to see those diamonds but I wanted to see that pretty pink pink too so I'm just gonna put that right under here and then there because I know that's gonna and put another one here okay and put that you're such a Making. There we go. You're such a blessing on these sides. And then thank you for your prayers. This is one of those super simple cards that has a real wow. Did you see how easy that was to make? Just halfway measurement on the sides, whichever way you're going, just go halfway. Halfway is two and three quarters or two and three quarters. Halfway on the four and a quarter side is two and an eighth. That would be two and an eighth. And then you just score from the folds to the middle, folds to the middle, and then halfway to the middle, halfway to the middle, and then just fold them back and forth. So here I thought I'm going to use some of these in color resin dots, so pretty. And we also have the in color shimmer gems, which are beautiful as well. And I think I'm just gonna go with the pink and the pink. There we go. One of them, I think it's the In Color Shimmer has 150 and the In Color Resin have 120. So whichever one you can get your hands on, these are super pretty. So there you go, two of an Aerofold card. This, and I just changed, well, this one I made, but I just changed up the colors and I changed up the sentiments, but I love how pretty this font is and how it takes up a pretty large amount of the card. So if you want to show off your DSP, then you have that and then this, the sentiment pops out. So isn't that fun? So if you have any questions about making this card or the starter promotion that runs till the 31st of May, if you want to sign up as a business demonstrator or you want to sign up as a hobby demonstrator, getting a nice discount on your uh, stamping products, you will get the in color ink pads with the DSP and the markers. Yes, and the cardstock. So if you have any questions, um, just give me a call or email me at cindyleeb at gmail.com. Thanks for buzzing by, friends. Don't forget to sign up for the June 
2024 Busy Bee Bag too. I have a really great project. I have really great projects in plan for you. It is going to be awesome. Thanks for buzzing by, friends.